the first thing we have to think about video games uh, in the classroom is like, well, first, let's think about games. I mean, we don't necessarily need digital games uh, to make activities, learning activities work. And in addition to that, making games and learning games is very, very hard. So uh, a lot of time teachers ha come with a lot of expectations and they get frustrated when at, at the first attempt things don't really work. So what I strongly suggest is try to collaborate with other teachers, try to iterate, that means try in different times, in one classroom, in another one, getting feedback, exchanging notes and trying to research what has been working with other colleagues. Uh, that's very, very important because if we don't iterate, it's very easy to just discard a, a potentially very good idea uh, because, well, it takes time. So that's, that's the very first thing. Um, what I think it's, it's more important than games themselves is the spirit, uh, to go and use a, a playful spirit. I mean, try to, uh, which doesn't necessarily mean gamification. I mean, gamification is good uh, in order to provide clear feedback of goals and feedback for, for students. But uh, I think just, just getting a playful attitude in the classroom. Uh, for example, uh, I, I, was, I was recently in, in this conference here uh, explaining how we can create historical figure maps of power relationships by uh, analyzing, well, history with the categories of uh, superheroes, right? For example, in order to, to teach history in a non uh, chronological way, well, identifying different uh, historical characters and having students make lists of what are the superpowers, what are the kryptonites, who is their, uh, who are their, their sidekicks or their, uh, for example, their uh, arch enemies. Okay, and once you have that map of relationships, and putting the first superpower, the second superpower, the third superpower, that mapping is good. But what's more important is debating with other teams among students of why did I pick this one instead of this other one? Because that's where you start understanding that, that history is constructed, but not in a random way, but depending on, well, the decisions you take. So uh, that's not necessarily a game. There's no winner or loser. But the fact that you are using popular culture categories in a playful uh, uh, way because, well, historical figures are supposedly to be very important and, and video games are support, uh, I'm sorry, and, and superheroes are supposed to be very trivial. So the collision of those things, there's play in there, just there. So I think if I had to, to make a recommendation, well, I mean, I mean, Mitch Resnick makes a very clear point in his latest book, uh, uh, Lifelong Kindergarten. It's about keeping the spirit of kindergarten in school, in high school and the university. It's as easy and as hard as that. So do we really need digital technology in the classroom? Well, the answer is, it depends. I mean, what we really need is good teachers. I mean, uh, all these fantasies, technocratic fantasies of, of replacing teachers with, uh, with technology, that's something that politicians and sometimes administrators think about but never say it out loud because it's politically incorrect and it's wrong and it won't work because it doesn't matter how good your tools are if you don't have a committed person behind it's like it's just like photography it doesn't matter uh, how good your camera is if you don't if you're not looking and uh, and don't want to share images with somebody and uh, so digital technology can bring a lot of benefits in very specific uh, areas uh, and video games in particular especially because they're very good at visually explaining things, they're very good at scaffolding uh, the learning, and they're very good at providing instant feedback. Th those are things that usually in, in textbooks or, or, or films uh, you don't find at least in, a, in, a, in such a potent way. That being said, they also require a lot of time, it's very hard to, to get a lot of people working and, or playing at the same time. Uh, Wi-Fi never works. Uh, there's a lot of constraints also. So uh, it's important to understand that digital tools can be great in the classroom, but used when they're needed. I mean, for example, right now we're working, I mean, we developed this, this solution for, for, uh, that we're using uh, right now in, in a pilot phase with 1,300 people, uh, well, 1,300 students, they're people, uh, young students in school. They uh, are learning, learning 
with textbooks, with physical manipulative, with toys, and with digital uh, games. And, uh, and people just assume that they're all the time playing with uh, the tablet. No, I mean, they spend a lot of time reading stories on, on books or looking at textbooks or uh, playing around with, with, with objects in order to build mathematical concepts. Uh, so it's a healthy, balanced diet that we need. We have a, an ecology of tools. And uh, just like with regular eating, you just cannot eat chocolate for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can try, probably most kids have tried, but there's consequences. Well, with digital technology, it's the same. So we have to, to try to, to, to balance. And also because, for example, books add, add to the equation, the fact that they're not interactive and they, they don't provide uh, instant feedback can be used in, in, uh, in our benefit, in the sense that after, for example, you you practice a, a concept on uh, in a digital game, then when you transfer to the book, it's harder. You're on your own, but it's also more challenging. So that what, in theory, it's a it's a problem of the, of the textbook can be used as a boss battle for the student to go an extra level and uh, and take a higher um, challenge. So adults seeing that digital technology motivates students. And that can be true in a, to a certain point, but what's important is that with technology and play, it's essential to understand that th there's a very easy misunderstanding that is we bring in this in order to entertain kids, to entertain students. And that's the biggest mistake we can make because games and play are not what, what drives people to play is not fun. Fun is a consequence of play. But what drives people to play is challenge. So we have a lot of bored students in our schools and high schools. The opposite of, of, of boring is not fun. It's, it's a challenge. So what, brings, what, what games and technology can bring to the table, it's, it's a challenge that can easily adapt to each student. And that's hard to do with other, with, other, uh, with other strategies. So students can, can have a challenge that it's not too easy, otherwise it's boring, or too hard, otherwise it's overwhelming. And that fine balance, that personalized balance, can, uh, can also have, uh, be very impactful.